Hello, and welcome to Shedding the Bitch Radio, where you can discuss, debate, and get advice on how to discover and shed the bitches of fear, insecurity, self-doubt, and negative mindsets, so you can realize your dreams and life purpose, and create and accelerate the riches you want in life. Join us here live every Tuesday at noon Eastern, and dialogue with us at 818-572-2910. You can also chat with us at Blog Talk Radio slash Shedding the Bitch, or share your stories on our website at SheddingTheBitch.com. Whatever the bitch is that's holding you back from living your life to the fullest, it's not worth giving up the riches in life that you deserve. So call in now and let Bernadette Bowes know what's holding you back. 818-572-2910. Welcome, 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 everybody, to our next episode of Shedding the Bitch Radio. I am so excited that you are here on this beautiful, beautiful May day. We have a great conversation. Who doesn't love talking money? Actually, probably none of us do, but we have to, and we have to get our our hands around it, and that's what we're going to be discussing today. But before I introduce the subject and our guest, uh, just a few reminders Um, some great, great episodes we've had recently. Uh, We've talked to Robert Wolfhoff about marketing and about post-COVID-19, how to get ready as a business owner to really harness the post-economy as opposed to even what we're going through uh, right now. Uh, Then we have talked uh, persistence and how persistence is very much needed right now, (laughs) very much needed right now as well as a great tool that you could be using if you're kind of feeling the weight of everything happening is serving others. So as opposed to just kind of in your own head, thinking about what's going on in your world, um, go and do something for somebody else. Kind of turn all your attention onto someone else or something else and feel that shift that will be made as a result of serving others. Because my favorite My favorite uh, statement is serving others serves you. And that's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Uh, Then we've also had conversations with Melanie Brown. And that was a fun and inspiring conversation about women overcoming. And she collects stories and then shares those stories. uh, And she calls them her overcoming stories. Uh, So she shared all that with me so we can all find hope in the darkest of times. So you can go to sheddingthebitch.com forward slash radio podcast to find all of our episodes. You can also go to blogtalkradio.com and find the Shedding the Bitch channel. And then, of course, our Shedding the Bitch YouTube channel has all of our programs, especially those like today, when we have our guests in our virtual or our physical studio. Uh, so you can check out all of those and plus other um, other uh, videos and tips and and tricks out there as well. And then of course, we'd always love for you to become a Ball of Fire member on our ballofireconsulting.com site, as well as our Facebook private group, Shift to Riches. Trust me when I say you get tons of inspiration, education, and even entertainment out there. <laughs> uh, so think about joining that. Just go look for Shift to Riches private group on Facebook. All right, today, 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 we are talking about Money Matters, and we're talking to Karen Ford of KMF Company. Hi, Karen. Hello. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Wonderful. Thank you. Good. <laughs> good to be here. Uh, well, I'm thrilled you are, especially when it comes to money. Uh, so we're going to be talking about <laughs> debt demol- d- demolition. Debt dem- demolition. I love that. I can't say it, but I love that. Uh, and answering the question, credit card, are credit cards a risk? or reward. Uh, so what you're going to listen for and what you are going to learn from this conversation is what, what is a budget and will it benefit you? How do I get rid of debt? And you know, many of us are feeling it right now. What's the big deal about credit cards? Mm, that's an intriguing question. What's the big deal about credit cards? And then can I retire wealthy? Now for Karen and anyone listening for the first time, uh, we ground you in a rich question. That's all based around the subject that we're going to be talking about. That way you can relate to it and you can listen for answers to your question. So your rich question for today is what is that number one thing you're struggling with when it comes to money? And like I said, we don't like to talk about it, but you know what? We have to, we have to talk about it. We have to face it, all that kind of good stuff. 
So think about that. What's your number one struggle? Because most likely Karen will answer it. And if not, then you'll have all her contact information as we go through the, the uh, interview uh, so you can reach out to her. All right. Now, if you are tweeting with us, if you're posting and commenting with us, you can always use hashtag money matters, hashtag budget, or hashtag shed the bitch, of course. Now, before we get started, I do need to thank a couple of organizations that have been huge, huge contributors and partners to the Shedding the Bitch community and everything we do. And that is Deborah Parker of Parker House Virtual Services. She's actually my virtual assistant, and she does provide virtual assistant and social media support to small and medium-sized companies. If you want to learn more from her, please email her at deborahparker.va at gmail.com. Now, I also need to thank Debbie Snelling of North Georgia Tax Solutions. They are a full house, full house financial and tax services organization that also serves small to medium-sized companies. And you can go to ngtaxsolutions.com for more information. And no, she's not limited to Georgia. I was asked that recently. So she's not limited to Georgia, so she too can help you. Uh, so check out both of those um, organizations. And if you'd like to be an advertiser or a sponsor to the program, please reach out to me directly, Bernadette Bose at ballofireinc.com, and my team and I will reach back out to you. All right. So let me tell you a little bit about our guest, <laughs> Karen. Karen is a master financial coach, public speaker, entrepreneur, and author who has coached people with a variety of money issues from just 500 in debt to 800,000 in debt, yikes. She has coached folks with up to 86 credit cards and taught them how to pay down and pay off those credit cards in record time. Karen's mission is to inspire others to rid themselves of debt and build wealth. She encourages others to break the shackles of debt and gives valuable insight into building wealth so they can experience financial freedom. Who doesn't want that? Karen Ford's number one Amazon bestselling book, Money Matters, is a discovery for many. This book is not only motivational, but practical. She is an avid real estate investor who enjoys buying, selling, and flipping properties. She has even bought properties for as little as $10 and turned a few dollars into thousands. In Money Matters, she provides keys to demolishing, demolishing debt. <laughs> demolishing debt, <laughs> shares how to budget correctly, and gives principles in wealth building. Woo, 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 woo. <laughs> so excited you are here, and this is such a great conversation, especially in these times right now. So before we get into specific things that I want to learn about you, do tell us a little bit about yourself um, beyond even you know, what I was able to share in your uh, bio. Well, sure. It's, a, it's my pleasure to be here with you. Uh, my history is I'm actually a registered nurse, but I haven't practiced as a nurse for several years. And I look at it like this, Bernadette. I look at it like as a nurse, I help people get healthy physically. And as a master financial coach, I help people get healthy financially. Nice. And I'm still helping people, but wow, it's amazing to me. Uh, how many times people just don't have an understanding of how money works. And I want to see people win financially. I want to see them win with money, with all of their endeavors. <laughs> there you go, people. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, I did want to ask, uh, where are you calling from? What state are you in? West Virginia. Ah, West Virginia. And how are you guys handling everything that's going on? What's uh... Well, I think, it's, I think we're all in the same boat, to be honest with you. Some people were unemployed and they're receiving unemployment right now, but we're slowly but surely opening up some businesses uh, per the governor's you know, statement. So right. I think it's just going to be a slow process, probably slower than what we had hoped right. or wanted, just like the rest of the continental U.S., yeah, uh, but we do what we can do right now. So absolutely, yeah. And from a from a financial perspective, since we're talking money, what are you seeing out there as far as people's responses and what they're doing or not doing um, as a result of this economic? I'll just be nice and say climate <laughs> that we're in. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I think it's a mixture of a little bit of everything. I've got some folks that are just not caring and they're spending. They're going online and spending. And then I've got other folks that are being somewhat cautious and, and watchful and not 
going out and spending money. And so looking at it from both perspectives, you know, I'm not saying that people can't spend. You can. It, are you still working? So those are some questions we need to look at. If you're still working and there's no, you know, there's no stopping with your job and you have the same income, then certainly, you right. know, you can spend. But if you are unemployed or you're receiving unemployment and you're unsure when you're going to go back to work, now is not the time to be Googling <laughs> and buying things. So right. we just need to halt that a little bit. Right. Uh, it's amazing to me, you know, how sometimes people's mindsets work. And so not to do it out of fear, but just to do it to be cautious. Right. Uh, and other people like myself, we're taking advantage because <laughs> financially, because right now the market is low and that mm -hmm. is the time to buy is yes. when the market's low. But I have great hopes. I, I believe our economy is going to come back strong. It's going to come back better. It's going to come back brighter. And I, and you know, not not that everybody is thinking this, but I actually think it's going to when it comes back, it's going to come back fast. Wow. I really do. And I'm looking at it from that perspective. Yeah. So. Well, you know, being a money person, you probably have the pulse on it. So uh, we'll look forward to it with you <laughs> for it coming back fast. <laughs> So, so tell me what is, okay, so, and I agree with you. I think, you know, yes, a lot of people are spending, not even just in investments, but, you know, just picking up employees cheap, picking up products cheap, picking up sure. materials cheaply. Um, but what is the number one thing that someone should be doing to get control of their money? Oh, the number one thing, that's a great question. The number one thing that people need to do to get control of their money is to learn how to uh, properly budget. Because, you know, sometimes we hear that word budget and we're thinking, ah, oh, it's a four letter word. Yep. <laughs> and it isn't. It's a six letter word. <laughs> However, or five letters, look, I can't even count. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but no, you know, the word budget, six letters, the word budget is something that's going to empower you. A budget is you telling your money what you want it to do, instead of wondering where it went. Mm -hmm. Now, I know that's a mouthful, but it's amazing how many people I've talked with, we just got done with tax season, right? right. People filed their taxes, they got those little W-2s in the mail, and they thought to themselves, wow, I made all that money last year. What happened to all that money I made? And when, I, when people say that to me, I say, do you budget? And 99.9% .9 of the time, unfortunately, they don't. Because a person who budgets knows exactly where their money is going and where right. it went. Right. And some people have a great income each and every month. And they're thinking, what happened to all that money I made? You know, it's the, the $5 latte here or the $5 latte there. Many times it's not the, the, it's not the big truck payment. It's not the big car payment. Right. It's not the vacation of their dreams that really – cramp their styles, so to speak. It's the little foxes that spoil the vine. It's the $5 <laughs> latte. It's the, the drive through fast food two yep. or three times a week that people don't remember they spent that amount right. of money. Right. <laughs> and, it, and it's those recurring, those recurring fees, you know, I mean, especially if you're buying up apps and then all oh. the, and you use them one minute and you don't the next, you're, you're spending hundreds of dollars potentially a month that on is things, so true. On things you're not even using, right? That is so very true. You know, sometimes I think about Christmas time, right? We get ready to have our New Year's resolutions, and I and people say, "Man, I'm going to join the gym. I'm going to really do I, do my part. I'm going to get healthy." And they go out and buy all this healthy food, and then they join the gym. I'm not opposed to anybody joining a gym, not at all. I believe in taking care of our, ourselves physically. Right. However, if you join a gym and you're paying, you know, $150, $300 a month, whatever it is, then go, then do it. But if you find yourself after 30 days and you've dropped off and now you're not paying that or you're still paying it, but you're not going, now's the time to cancel that gym membership. What things have you bought? What memberships have you joined? Magazines, whatever it is right. that maybe you're not using. And you're, you're spending it, you're paying for it, but you're not using it. 
I'm all for it. I love a cup of coffee myself. I am an <laughs> avid caffeine consumer. But do I need to go through that drive through every day at six bucks, seven bucks a pop? Right, right. I, I touched a young man one time, and he was actually pretty good with his money. And I said, but I knew there was something going on here. I said, do do you buy coffee? He said, yeah. And I said, do you make it at home or what? And he said, oh no, I drive through such and such a place every day on my way to work. I said, how much does that cost you? Long story short, he was spending three hundred and fifty dollars a month on that coffee that he had to have every day. Mercy. And so he didn't realize it though, because you know a debit card, it's mindless. Right. right. You're swiping it or using right. a chip. And yep. so he decided he wouldn't make his coffee at home and get that treat lost. <laughs> so he changed a little bit. <laughs> yeah. If I heard three hundred and fifty dollars, that's a car payment, you know? That's you could, it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, so let me ask you something. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Um, all right, so I'm a, uh, is it fair to say, right, especially right now in this environment, uh, is cash king or are credit cards good or bad for us? What should we be considering when it comes to both of those things? Cash is always king. Whether it's now, later, earlier, cash is always king. Because if I walk into a department store and I see a dining room set that I just have to have, obviously I don't have to have it, but let's say there's a price tag of 5000 on it. And of course, you know, the salespeople are so kind and they say, oh, you don't have to charge it and have all those fees. We'll let you have it for 90 days, same as cash. 91% <laughs> of people that buy things on 90 days, same as cash, don't pay it off in 90 right. days. Right. And then all of those fees are added to it. So mm -hmm. cash is always king because if I go back into that same department store and, buy, and want to buy that dining room set, but I have cash and say, what will you do? Are, are they going to sell it to me for 4000 Yeah, because if they don't, I'll go somewhere else right. that right. will sell it to me at that discounted price. Yeah. Now, you asked a great question, credit cards. I I am an avid believer that uh, credit cards can be beneficial for the right person. However, for the right person, <laughs> not for the right reason, for the right person, for the right person, okay. because if you don't pay those, that credit card bill off each and every month to get rid of those fees, that interest rate, you know, and a lot of times they're so high, then you really shouldn't buy using a credit card. But, if you're going to pay it off each and every month and be exempted from any interest, then I say, okay, you can. Because some people I've talked with, they like the points, they use airline miles, that kind of thing. I totally get it. But if you're not going to pay it off each and every month, it's going to be more of a risk mm -hmm. than a reward to you. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, it's going to be, you're not getting that bonus air, airline ticket because you're paying for it in the fees that you're paying. Right? That's exactly right. right. That's exactly right. That's okay. a mouthful right there. That's so very true. Yeah. And so if you're, if you're going to get the benefit from it, then you need to get the benefit where you pay it off each and every single month. Right. So, right. Uh, yeah. and I've talked with people before where they had credit card, credit cards ranging from 6% all the way up to 33%. Mm, ah. Damn. Damn. Yeah. That, that hurts. Yeah. That hurts bad. <laughs> Yes, it does. Bad. <laughs> so, so let me ask you something. Um, uh, so when you think about credit cards, but you th also think about budgeting and you talked about the fact that if someone has a good job and, you know, and, and they are, you know, getting paid, you know, they just need to be very well aware of how and where they're spending their money. Um, but of course, as we get, make more money, all of our expenses want to, we, you know, we want to take all of our expenses up. For instance, like, buying a car, you know, as right. opposed to spending $200 on a car. Now I want to spend $800 on a car. Um, and is that okay? If, mm. is, is that okay? Well, you can, <laughs> I don't advise it. But. If you end up with a bonus or you end up with an increase in your income, it's almost like a lot of people think they have a stamp of approval. Oh, I made this much more money. I've got this big raise. So I'm going to go out and I'm going to trade that car in for a more expensive car. I advise don't do that. 
bank that money because you're already living the lifestyle that you're presently living without increasing the amount that you're spending. Right. And so, you know, trying to keep up with the Joneses, I mean, let's face it, most of the Joneses are broke. Yeah, they, they have that. <laughs> yeah, they have that house, but they've got a mortgage. They've got a second mortgage. They've got two, two point three kids. Not sure how that works. You know, they've got the dog. They've got the cat. They've got the boat. And a lot of their credit cards are maxed out. Yeah. So yeah. visually, when you're looking at them from the outside, they have it all together. Right. It's but true. many times they don't because right. their credit cards, you know, they're charging these things. You know, I, I grew up, I'm one of seven children. And so that was really interesting because we lived in a house where we all had to share. We wore hand-me-downs. We had one bathroom. Not sure how we did that. Uh, I'm, one, I'm one of 12, Karen. Man, so you know what I'm talking about. Yes, I know you what know you're what saying. I'm talking about. I know so, what you're saying. You know, we were taught. You know, uh, yes, I would have loved to live the lifestyle when I first got married, love to live the lifestyle that my parents presently live. But many times people think they forget it took your parents 20 or 30 years to attain that lifestyle they're presently living. We have to practice patience. And, we, you know, we're in such a fast-paced culture and society right now. You know, we didn't like having to go somewhere, so we buy on Amazon. And it wasn't quick enough. So now we have Amazon Prime, and then that wasn't quick enough. And now there's Amazon Now, where you're going to get it at your door in an hour. Yep. Listen, let's practice a little bit of patience. Right, right, right. You'll <laughs> right? save us a lot of money. Save a lot of money by not <laughs> going out and doing that. And be patient with it. Listen, if you can say no to some things right now and say, I'll buy that in six months and start planning it or three months or what have you, First of all, you're going to be happier because you're not going into debt for that particular item. Yeah. And yeah. then in three months or six months, when you do buy it, you don't have a payment because you saved up for that particular item. You're going to appreciate it so much more by saving up for it and paying cash for it. Absolutely. Cash is king. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So that $800 car, you know, put it off. <laughs> it's not really that necessary. That's five, right. And five minutes after you get it, you lose tons of depreciation on it. That's uh, exactly right. Uh, <laughs> That's right. Yeah, yeah. I've been there, done that. So not $800, though. I'm not that crazy. Um, <laughs> now, so if someone out there does have credit cards and they have credit card debt and it's high, maybe not $800,000 as, as it was right. mentioned. Um, but anyway, how can they and what can they do to get rid of that debt? Well, first, first of all, one, and I know this is almost like a no-brainer, but I have to say this. If you want to get out of debt and you want to get rid of credit card debt, you have to stop using those credit cards because otherwise it's just a vicious cycle. You make a payment and then you go charge. You're spinning your wheels there. You're right. a cat chasing its tail. Right. So stop using the credit cards and then make a list of your smallest debt down to your lar smallest debt to largest debt on okay. a sheet of paper, smallest to largest. Don't leave anything out. So let's pretend for a moment your smallest debt is a, a credit card that has a $100 balance on it and your payment is $25 a month. Well, once you pay that off, let's say your next debt is a $500 credit card balance with a $50 a month payment. Well, once you get rid of that smallest debt of $25 a month, you're not going to pocket that $25 and you're not going to spend it. You're going to apply that $25 payment to the next credit card along with that $50 payment. Now you're going to tackle it $75 a month until it's gone. Right. It's, called, it's called a debt snowball. And the reason we do that is because just like a snowball starts at the top of the hill, it's very small, but as it goes down that hill, it gets larger mm -hmm. and it builds momentum. It's faster. Yep. And you know, we're not patient people many times. And so we want to see a quick win. Once you see that quick win, now you're more apt to stick with the, the program, so to speak. Yeah. And you're going to build momentum. And then once you pay that credit card off, and you're thinking, I'm not really trustworthy, call, cancel it, cut it up. 
because listen, if you have to have a credit card or you feel that you need a credit card, one credit card will suffice. Right. Rather than five or 10 or 20. Right. And, and again, I think the points and all these, you know, bonuses that you get with these credit cards, sure. um, you know, I think people really have to think about the fact that if you're not paying them off and you're paying interest, you're really not getting any bonuses. You know, I That's mean, exactly right. Yeah, it's crazy. That's exactly right. Yeah. Is credit card debt, uh, of course, mortgages are, are someone's probably biggest investment but oh yes yeah is credit card debt i guess what other debt would there be but is credit card debt um what really sinks most individuals i would say credit card debt is right up there but cars too because i've talked with people before where their income is say you know let's say their income is four thousand dollars a month and they have a truck or a car payment of 900 bucks a month i mean i've talked with people with that and i'm thinking <clears throat> buddy, you know, your, your truck payment is more than what your house payment is. There's something wrong here, yeah. you know, and I get it. People, they like their vehicles, but the smart way of buying a vehicle is don't buy a brand new vehicle. Get one that's just a couple years old. That way someone else already took the depreciation on it. Number one, number two, you're still going to have some kind of a warranty on it. Just make sure you don't, there's not a lot of miles on it. Right. You're still going to have a newer vehicle. It's going to have a warranty and it's going to have that brand new car smell because the, the car dealerships are going to make sure that it's spiffy and, and great for you. But don't take, don't buy the brand new car. You're really, it's just, not, it's not a win situation. It's really I learned not. that like, I learned that about 30 years ago um, that I bought my first pre-owned, I bought a pre-owned car and it was, it was from a dealership that just took care, pristine care of it and then sure. had a, had program with it. And yes, it reduced my, you know, reduced my payment and it looked as new as the next guy, um, sure. so forth and so on. So yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Now I want to talk about, um, in our last few minutes, I want to talk about Money Matters, your book. Oh yeah. Okay. So give us, <laughs> so give us some <laughs> ideas because what you wrote is, um, and I don't have it right. Oh yeah. Uh, it's not only motivational, but it's practical. So give us an idea of what someone could find within your number one best-selling book. My <laughs> okay. Well, money matters. I, I titled it that for a couple of reasons. Number one, money does matter. It, all, it really all. does. You have to have money to live on. Money. And in the content of the book, I discuss matters of money. Money matters. So it's, I kind of coined it that way. But in this book, you're going to learn how to properly budget so if you never learned how to budget, this book is going to teach you how to budget. There's a chapter on demolishing debt, debt demolition. How do you do it? Where do you begin? How do you stick with the process? I, always talk, I also talk about uh, building wealth. Do you want to invest in a Roth IRA, a 401k? What's the difference between a traditional IRA, a 401k, a Roth IRA? You know, do you want to seek in purchasing stocks? How do you go about that? And then I'll also talk about real estate investing. But I also have a chapter on there about our thought life. Because many times our thoughts become words, our words become actions, our actions become habits, and our habits become our lifestyle. So in other words, do, you want to, do we want to keep saying, oh, I'll never get out of debt, I'll never get out, no. You don't want to keep saying that because now your words and your actions, your actions are going to follow those words. Right. So even though you're thinking, oh, I'll never get out of debt, we have to sw do a switch. We have to flip the switch. And whether we feel like we'll never get out of debt, we don't want to say it. We have to say, oh, it's easy to get out of debt. Perhaps create a vision board so you can see yourself taking that vacation that you've always wanted to take. There's mine. There you go. There's <laughs> your vision board. Do you want to see yourself out of debt? You know, put that on the vision board. Put on the vision board what you want to see happen for your life, not what you're presently experiencing. Absolutely. Words are powerful, and yeah. we can produce what we're saying with our words. I'm telling you, if someone... 
people listening are going to go, is she Bernadette's sister from another mother? <laughs> uh, because that's, you know, that, those are, you know, we talk about, you know, what you focus on expands and your dominant thoughts, you know, rule your behavior and those kind of things. That's it. Absolutely. That's true. Absolutely love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. All right. In our last minute or so, what last tip? Um, would you provide everybody? And then I'm going to make sure you, um, everyone has all your information to get a hold of you and to get your book and all that kind of good stuff. Okay. Let's so one last tip. I would say one last tip would be no matter what kind of financial situation you're in right now, whether you have a lot of debt, maybe right now you're, you're getting unemployment because of the predicament that we're in right now, there is hope. There is hope for you because if you're still breathing, there is hope for you. And if you got into debt, you can get out of debt. Right. So there is hope for every individual, no matter what the situation it is. Yeah, absolutely. There's hope. Amen, sister. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> There's hope. There, there is hope, and you know, and all anybody has to do is, you know, take that hope and reach out to Karen and let her help you. Let her help you uh, get that financial freedom. Don't focus on the debt and the expense and all that. Focus on the financial freedom that you want and what you're going to do with it when you have it, but you're not going to spend it. Ha. That's right. <laughs> all right. So I want to make sure everyone has your information. Again, her book is Money Matters. And of course you can go to Amazon and look up Karen Ford, Money Matters and find her number one best-selling Amazon book. Uh, at the same time, go to her website, karenford.org. KarenFord.org. Um, her Facebook page is Money Managing. Awesome. Everybody, you need to you know, be liking that page right now. Uh, as well as on LinkedIn, you can obviously find her on uh, by Karen Ford uh, and look for her pretty face and the fact that she's Money Matters and that she's a financial coach. There's a, there's a couple of digits behind Karen Ford, um, but you'll be able to find her. I found her very easily. Uh, so you'll be able to find her on LinkedIn as well. But definitely reach out to her on KarenFord.com. She also, pro oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, KarenFord.org. Um, also, her email address, if you want to jot it down so you can reach out to her, is KarenB1008, so that's 1008, at Hotmail.com. This has been awesome. Thank I you. I so enjoyed it. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. And uh, for everyone here in the uh, Shedding the Bitch community. I look forward to having you right back here Tuesday at noon Eastern time for another episode of Shedding the Bitch Radio. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Thank you for listening to Shedding the Bitch Radio with Bernadette Bose. Join Bernadette every Tuesday at noon Eastern as she helps you shift your bitches to riches. And the dialogue is always going on at SheddingTheBitch.com. See you next week.